Sum up for me your contribution to the six days of volatility. Is this a more realistic pricing of markets? We've got to consider normalization and volatility are back on the table. So I think at a global level, uh, we've long held the view that inflation in the US will eventually come back. I think last Friday's data is consistent with that. We've also been long of the view that the Fed normalization will perhaps take place at a slightly quicker pace than markets have been pricing. And the combination of uh, somewhat stronger inflation print together with the market response to that in the long end and so forth, I think probably leads us to think this is a relatively healthy, more realistic pricing of what the economic outlook is in the US. If you translate that into the euro, yes. um, you know, Europe is behind the US in terms of the cycle. I think the inflation outlook is a little bit more quiescent here, at least at the moment. The ECB is not immune to the pressures to normalize, but I think they're a little bit further behind the US in terms of the process of normalization. So I think, you know, we don't really think it's going to be a big disturbance to our outlook for, for Europe. To the extent it's affected the European economy, it's largely because we've seen a marking down of uh, equity prices. Equity prices and equity markets are probably not the important, most important channels of transmission of the ECB's easy policy. And at least at the moment, um, the behavior of fixed income markets, credit markets, the banking system and so forth, all continues to be very orderly. And I think passing through the very easy policy and supporting growth and supporting the recovery and ultimately down the road, supporting a, a better inflation outlook. Now, we're at the regional Bundesbank today. Jens Weidmann will be here a little bit later on. And when we talk about the ECB, you and I were chatting a little bit earlier and you said, look, Manus, they have a very clear set of traffic lights mm. and the hurdle to do anything before September is quite high. Put that in context for me. So, I mean, the way I read it is, on the Governing Council, we've obviously had a very kind of controversial discussion of asset purchases, QE and so forth in the past. And that's understandable given the specific setup in the euro area, many countries, many fiscal policies, one monetary policy. I think we've moved into a phase now where that debate has been a little bit put in the past. We are where we are. Mm -hmm. And whether, whatever side you're on in that debate in the past, I think there's a recognition that asset purchases become a useful tool to signal a very difficult problem, which is how to signal when you're beginning to normalize rates. You're going to be normalizing rates on the back of accumulation of evidence over the last 18 months that the economy has stabilized, inflation no longer is trending downwards, and the recovery is beginning to kick in. But the marginal information you get just before you raise rates, start to raise rates, will always seem to be small relative to the decision to raise rates. What the ECB is able to do, having invested in this discussion of sequencing, we're not going to raise rates until we finish asset purchases, indeed well past, the decision of when to end your asset purchases really at this point is essentially a signal of when you're going to start to raise rates. So if you want to raise rates next March, you would end asset purchases in September. If you want to raise rates next June, which I think is the base case people have in mind, you would continue asset purchases to the end of the year. And I don't think that the previous skeptics of asset purchases are really going to stand in the way of it being used in the signaling uh, mode. Do you think then they'll use the language over the next, the, maybe at the markers of March or, or a little bit later in terms of changing the sequencing language? Is that how they prepare us? Because the market has got quite ahead of itself right. in terms of its presumption on those, when those rate hikes could be, could be brought forward. Right. So, I mean, I think the market is always inclined in the ECB context to treat the ECB as a little bit sort of congenitally hawkish. So it's going to think that rates are going to come earlier rather than later. I think in the past we've seen for the Bank of England and the Fed, it's been on the opposite side. It's tended to treat them as congenitally dovish. So, you know, the actions of central banks have to reflect that to some extent. So my sense is that we were here to some extent in March, but certainly in April and June, and particularly around the language of how long the asset purchases will continue to. I mean, we expect them to announce in June they will go on to the end of the year. That will be in the mode of Mr. Draghi and his colleagues trying to lean against the tendency of markets to bring that pricing of first rate hike forward. And he's certainly going out of his way at, at the news conference, etc. I just want to get a quick insight into you thinking on France and Macron. I look at the GDP data there. You're looking at the best year of investment since 2011. How confident are you in the reforms? What's your take on Macron 2017, 2018? 
Well, talking to clients, particularly corporate clients in France, I mean, I think the election of Mr. Macron was a sea change in their attitude towards what was going on in the French economy. So I think the credibility of a reform and change program in France under the leadership of Macron is quite high, and that's had a profound effect on sentiment, and of course sentiment can be a big driver of economic and market activity. I think at the same time, the strategy of Mr. Macron is, I mean, understandably from a political point of view, to pursue a 10-year presidency in a 10-year transition. And what I think that's led him to do is to prioritise both in terms of domestic French reforms and in terms of European governance reform measures that are politically feasible and achievable in the short term rather than very ambitious in the short term in order to, to build up a, a record of track record of success and sort of have a snowballing effect that will actually create the underlying real transformation over a longer period.